welcome back to another episode of Breaking the Line. And you could already tell that we're going to take a deep dive into the arts of mime and acting because we got a guest with us. Our first guest, Charles. Yeah, we got something special going on today. You know what that is? We got a new table. Yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's so special. <laughs> No, um, but of course, we also have Rosalie, which is, you know, Samuel's younger sister. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, a lot of our childhood was like either who's older or like how not, what a cute couple you have. <laughs> not until what? 12, 13? No. No, 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 for... no it was later. I don't know. Um, I, I, I just was... remember looking over at church and going, shoot, he's the same height as me. <laughs> not much longer. Yep. Well, you had your chance, but welcome to the podcast. Happy Thank to have you. you here. Yeah, but anyway, so I'm Charlton. I'm Samuel. Rosalie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't know, do you want to say a little bit of your mime experience? Like how you come to the mime world? I mean, I've told my story a little bit, but if you want to give a little brief. 12 years old, my mom said, hey, by the way, you're going to mime camp in three days. Classic. And so <laughs> that's how I started. And mostly it wasn't me going. They needed boys, so they took my older brother, and I was the tag along as normal. Nice. Yeah. Classic. And that was that was the history. Yeah. Well, today we have a fun song to look at, Jojo and Jehovah. Do you want to tell us the story of this one? Because I wasn't there, but these guys were. <laughs> yeah, so what's, what's funny is when I first met Rosalie, this was 12, 13 years ago. Oh, I didn't say um, how I met Rosalie. Oh, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> you, you go ahead and go first. <laughs> um, like 12, 13 years ago, um, we went to the annual mime camp in Kansas. And Rosalie and her husband, Chad, were the directors of that little that little mission trip there. Now, granted, I had been on the team for just a few years at that point. It wasn't super long. It was also, it was just really funny to have them as directors. And then we uh, just had a little bit of a goofy time writing a song. And by we, I mean, Rosalie and Chad as well. So um, if you want to tell the more detailed story about how the choreography came to be. Yeah. So like you said, uh, my husband and I were leading that mission trip. We had a team of six, I think, Something that yet. came with us from Branson. Uh did the normal Mime Kansas. I don't know if you guys were talking about that, but I mean, all the teams learned different songs. We were doing the final um, lineup for the presentation at the end and kind of realized we didn't have an opener. Um, and so my husband had this idea of, I don't know, he's always thought mime was a very special thing. <laughs> That's that a generous he, way of putting he it for a mime. Hi, yeah, Chad. He got into that. <laughs> So anyways, he just thought it would be hilarious of just writing a song of how we could never escape God. And specifically, he always thought the mime run was one of the funniest things, <laughs> one of the funniest techniques there was. And he's like, how hilarious would it be to write a mime where this person is trying to escape Jesus and they are running for all they're worth. And Jesus is just standing there and going, dude, <laughs> like... <laughs> Dude, you're not going anywhere. You can't escape from me. So it's like Jonah, but modern times. <laughs> yeah. And so that is where the idea for Jojo and Jehovah um, came from. And then the fun part was we had the idea. Then we had to find the music. And so we spent basically the rest of the night listening to over a hundred different YouTube. Class, uh, classic choreography. Yeah. You have the idea, but you need to find the music. So you're like, no, that's not going to work. Oh, look at, and no. then eventually we found it and nice. uh, gave the ideas. Uh, the people, you'll see it's a three-person mime. Um, so we had three people from our team on there and just kind of gave them the idea. And then Let them run flash, with it? Yeah, let them run with it. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. No. Uh, pun intended. Yeah, if, if I'm not mistaken, the two songs that ended up getting chosen were a song from Pokemon and a song from Legend of Zelda, right? I believe that's what it was. I believe that's what it was. I know one uh, was Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. And which was hilarious because like, you know, back at that time, like I, I forget when exactly I did, but we had written um, 8-Bit Jesus, I think like two years after that. So like this was, you know, video game music before we started, you know, going hard on random video game music and being like, in you mean like songs. Project under like <laughs> something I don't know, but <laughs> project something story. You've been literally mime music. That's all video game music for the whole Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, good times. <laughs> so twenty twelve, right? Yeah, we were at Mount, Mount Camp. Mm -hmm. I say we get into it. All right, let's do this. Yep, oh, so, who's that handsome looking guy? <laughs> so the three people are myself, uh, John Lilly. And Aaron Van Kirk, which was kind of fun. <laughs> oh, just nice, happy music. I love this stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yep, this first character is kind of like the, the person who follows Jesus and listens to what he says and everything goes pleasant and Jesus is there helping him out with his daily routine. And... Yeah, I love the little bits of how Jesus is interacting with his day, like handing out the keys and you know, calling up, like, how you doing, bro? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what I mean, part of it was the contrast of what does it look like to have Jesus in your life and not mm. just, you know, read your Bible in the morning and night, see you later, Jesus, but truly having the ongoing relationship with him. Yeah. Yeah. You see the, the arm go over? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Subtle. We're close friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I also love the whole, like, knock and welcoming him in as opposed to what's going to happen next. <laughs> Yeah. And then oh, you you can change. contrast the musical choices between the first song and the second song. <laughs> it's almost like he's dopey or something. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, he's he just like picks his teeth instead of brushing. So like Jesus is trying to do the exact same thing as he did with the first guy, but he's like, no, I don't want anything to do with. With Hygiene. Jesus. Yeah, and then so he, he, he like picks up a dirty sweater or jacket or whatever and puts it on. <laughs> no shower, he got, he got the body spray. So, of course, the idea is that, you know, everything that he should do in following Christ instead, he doesn't. And yeah. in doing so, he's worse off for it. No, I, I love the contrast of the two characters. Like, it, I think it emphasizes the, the problem here. <laughs> And it's just perfect for the humor. Oh no! Oh my gosh! You should have seen his face. He he emoted perfectly in that moment. He like opened the door. He's like, no. I just, I just love that God. Just like, okay, we'll I'll go through it anyway. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> like that's comedy gold. And then and then the R. <laughs> <laughs> ah. We we had way too much fun with this. And then here comes, like Rosalie was talking about, the nice little run trying to get away from God. <laughs> the casual, like... <laughs> <laughs> right here, bro. He's like, no, I'm, I'm still here. And then <laughs> just run together. <sighs> and then and we then, have our nice little gospel moment. Yes, there. exactly. We get down to the serious business. Mm -hmm. No, and... and Part of why it's good for an opener because it's comic, lighthearted. It brings you the audience curiosity in, and then kind of unpacks like, oh, we're actually here to do something meaningful. Mm -hmm. And there's a nice little symmetric ending pose too, which I always appreciate. So you're saying they just come to Jesus at the end? That's like yeah. every song. We get the classic, the classic. Somebody ministers and then bam, they're they're saved. Easy. <laughs> so that's our song. Let's get into the details. So purpose and message of the song. We kind of got into it a little bit. What do you say the purpose of the song is? Contrasting life with Jesus and life without. Right, very and simple. And then again, like we said, it was supposed to be lighthearted opener. Yep. Top per of the lineup. Yep, top of the lineup, just cracking it open. I think it covers pretty solidly. Yep. I don't have anything you'd add. Yeah, that's basically what I would have said. No. So let's get into then the uh, praises, things that went, I uh, think worked well towards that purpose and message. Highlights of the song. The comedy is is solid. Dirty shirt. <laughs> The axe. Sam, yeah. we may have used that once or twice hey, in real life. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> I may or may not have told mom that I'll shower at least every other day when I turned 13 and it didn't quite happen that way. But I was not that dirty. <laughs> I just remember not being able to breathe in our house. Oh. I remember not being able to breathe in the car when you put on your, like, nail polish and your hairspray all the time. <laughs> Okay, okay, oh, ch ever, children, ever. children, children. <laughs> no, but I love, yeah, going through the door, but uh, yeah, the, the the body spray was a good moment, but the, uh, particularly the running and the arm, uh, that's just filled with comedic moments, you know what? <laughs> I understand why you didn't want your arm around. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, man, you have to... <laughs> <laughs> oh, little guys. All right. What do you guys think? Things that went well. Yeah, I, I do think, like, there's... We talk about the classic three act structure, and I think this one kind of like subverts it slightly mm -hmm. because while I would say that there's like two acts, the second act you could say is sort of like split up into the third act as well. Because the first act is like you know, it establishes Jesus and and the the first main being like, oh, this is all wonderful, and then the second one does the same thing but uh, flips it on its head of you know, this is 
what happens if you don't follow Jesus. But then we get into kind of the third act where the main, the second main is running away from Jesus. And so we have that little classic three act structure that I think kind of builds up very nicely and then kind of climaxes at our little, you know, gospel moment where we bring back the the person from the first half mm -hmm. to minister to the person in the second half and i feel like that just kind of wraps it all up in a nice little bow i, I think that's done pretty well yeah i would say even the the third act starts when he starts to run away because mm -hmm. up until that point everything was mirrored with the first part but then when he chooses to like get up from the chair and walk away or run away that that is where you kind of get into the third act where mm -hmm. like something is developing it's more than just uh, ignorance or trying to just do your own life. It's like now he's actively changing his mind to run away and not just avoiding it. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Other things that you liked in the song? Um, I think this song is a little fun too in that it actually has the opportunity to use a lot of different rhyme technique. Yes. I think obviously we get different genres of song of, you know, sign language heavy, dance mm -hmm. heavy, all this. Flags, whereas, yeah. Yeah. Whereas this one really is more of a true mind piece. Um, Obviously, we had, what, an hour, hour and a half to put it together. <laughs> Pretty much that's so, the best minds, though, because, yeah, the mind yeah. technique is solid. I mean, we, we had some ideas, and, like, Aaron, I give a lot of credit to Aaron, because he came <laughs> up with some really dumb things to do during that, uh, during his section, and yeah. he did it perfectly. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, even they did well at mirroring what each other did, and mm -hmm. then Aaron just kind of took it to... The next level. Yes, so. and that, as comedy should. Yes, yep. <laughs> subverting expectations. Yeah. Um, so what about things that you might critique? Obviously, you guys choreographed it in a relatively short period of time, so not not here to judge you guys, even though I totally am. No, I mean, even just watching it back, there's a couple things with staging. Um, like when John comes out, he comes upstage, which isn't bad, but that causes Aaron to turn his, you know, back to the audience, and you miss that initial contact. Mm-hmm. Um, Charlton, when he does the cross, is good because it's supposed to be blocking Aaron, but at the same time, I'd probably yeah, turn it's more a little profile. bit more because you only mm -hmm. see the one right. arm from our, our view. Exactly, right. from at least the straight yeah. on. Yeah. yeah, no, I would agree. It's mostly staging issues. Um, another issue that I see is like, I, I would word it as consistency mm -hmm. um, because the places that the you know, the mirror and the wardrobe and even the door are kind of shifts a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the door was supposed to be center stage and sometimes it's over here. Over Classic here, problems with know. doors. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, well, and like, it reminds me a lot of So Long Self because in So Long Self, like, oftentimes people will tape the floor mm -hmm. to keep the house consistent because you're working with a full four walls, yeah. two doors, and like six windows. Yes. <laughs> And, like, you have to keep it all consistent. It's just straight up impossible yeah. sometimes. So a lot of people will tape the floors and stuff like that. I feel like that would probably help in this instance. Unless yeah. you're actually good. I was say, you have the chairs, which help a little bit as yeah. far as the consistency there. But totally right. agree. Which is something that I kind of cheat on in a mansion. Mm -hmm. Because, like, I have, you know, four doors, two, two levels, and lots of walls and stuff. But I cheat the heck out of it because those four chairs... Right. Give the spacing and everything way way more clarity on where things are on stage. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and then obviously, mind technique can always be well clear. Sure, but it, yeah, we're less here on the the technique and more just on the general choreography of things. Um, I think the the level of development that's already there was really good, so I don't really have much critique as far as the the choreography other than what you guys mm -hmm. mentioned. Theologically, uh, some things that are really interesting with the section is you have kind of some references to like knock and come in on the door. You know, that, that feels like a nice welcome Jesus moment. <laughs> uh, anything else you'd comment on, like the theology of the song? It, we kind of we kind of already mentioned we kind of already mentioned some of them with the uh, aspects of can you run away from God? Like if you were to even reference Jonah, if let's say you're doing this for a Christian audience, you, people would already kind of have the idea and, you'd probably get some invitation for them to watch of the don't run away or listen to the message kind of idea. <laughs> yeah. And theologically it's, the song is really funny in like a, like obviously it's meant to literally be funny, like it's, as a comedy song, but thinking about the theological implications mm -hmm. of it, it feels like it technically goes a little bit further than perhaps what God would do by like, you know, literally giving you your jacket and helping yeah, you get yeah. dressed in the morning. But of course, it's meant to be a metaphor. It's not meant to be taken literally. About to say, the metaphor, uh, maybe this is another phrase, the metaphor is not about, you know, how dirty your teeth are and your stinky your clothes are. This is like, 
the spiritual representation, right? right. We're using right. a physical object like Jesus in the parables to represent a spiritual reality. Right. Because while Jesus might care about your dental hygiene, it, it's more about your spiritual dental hygiene. Right. Exactly. Than would. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, I. I feel like that maybe that would be a little bit of a criticism. We need to make sure the audience understands that this is a metaphor. This right, is not yeah. meant to be taken literally. Yeah, no, no legalism here. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but it's solid stuff. Clarity, difficulty, and style is what we're going to be writing it on today. Mm -hmm. And we have a third person, so it's, you know. Yeah, we get, we get three things, right. three, three people for three things, which is nine. And nine is basically three squared, which three, there are three points in the triangle of Luminati confirmed. You okay there, bro? Yeah. Is this where, if you had emojis, you would just have a little rabbit? <laughs> <laughs> Charlton, put the rabbit. <laughs> uh, dang it. Future Charlton, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so one out, of, one out of ten, one being unclear, ten being perfectly clear. Uh, I really love this song. Like, obviously, there's the metaphor, so you could miss something. And But if you're watching from start to finish, I, you're, I think you're going to get the message of like, oh, this guy needs to not you know, run away. So I'm going to give it like a nine. It, as far yeah. as the purpose of the song, it's there. Right. And it, it's really funny because oftentimes songs without lyrics, like instrumental songs such as this, are a lot more difficult to get the message across because sometimes the, the lyrics of the song will carry it. But this one, it gets, it gets the message across pretty well. I think I think it's pretty, pretty well written. I wouldn't give it a nine, but I'll give it like an eight. I'm going to give it. Where are you leaning? What are you giving it? I don't know. It's hard when you choreograph the song yourself. I'm like, a little oh, yeah, it's, there, right there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a 20 like 8. out of 10. 8.5. 8.5. Yeah, yeah. We cheese it. it out. We cheese it a little bit. <laughs> there we go. Uh, difficulty. Uh, there's a lot of tech technique. I think that's <laughs> probably one of the hardest parts about this song. Um, I do like that there's a little bit of kind of a difficulty curve. Like first person, it, it's a lot less technique. So if you had like a diverse team of maybe more experienced versus less experienced, it, it could be easy enough to have in the less experienced person doing that first role, so you're doing less things. Um, the God character, the difficulty is mostly, I feel like, in the characterization. Yeah, it's characterization. It's mm -hmm. less than technique. But isn't that happen a lot in duo and trio mimes where, like, one character will have a cue-heavy, like, technique-heavy side, and the other one will just be like, free live it, but, you know, characterization is what mm. you need. <laughs> it seems to be that way. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So difficulty, both, you know, with all two to three aspects there, I'd still give it, like, a seven. It's Technique needs to be clear to catch it all. Yep, I, I was kind of leaning because when it comes down to like talking about technique, that does give it some extra points in my book. Um, a lot of it comes down to like spacing and positioning and uh, blocking, as you might call it in theater. Like all of the aspects of it that make the song look good adds to the difficulty. So mm -hmm. while the technique inherently definitely gives it points, I would also give it, I was going to give it like an eight for difficulty. I was going to say, I'd probably lean to eat because one thing you guys have brought up is this is also completely instrumental. Yeah, true. And it is very similar music. There's not a lot of musical cues. Mm -hmm. And so specifically for the first person, he really has to pace it well. Otherwise, there's a very awkward pause between his part and the next person. Whereas, you know, the second person, we actually probably have another 20 <laughs> plus seconds of music that it just fades at the end. So if they're off a little bit, it's not too bad. But especially that first person has to keep pace. Otherwise, they run out of music or they leave way too long of an awkward pause. So yeah, for sure. That's also just, you know, I mean, like when you do a public speech, a lot of times you talk a lot faster. And so just making sure you're staying on pace. And there's there's nothing in the middle that really tells you, yeah. hey, you got 30 seconds left. Like Exactly. Moving, or so. sometimes there are cues that you catch up in the middle where like there's a sound that knocks at the door or something that you use and so yeah it's just very free form <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you're giving it an eight i think an eight all right and then style uh a lot of the style in smaller group science songs come from the people who are inherently doing them so there's a lot of room for creativity which i do appreciate mm -hmm. um but like we mentioned the knock and let jesus come in the the, the subtle arm <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> not so subtle and then yeah the I would say the creative idea of the running away is really cool. So I'm I'm going to go pretty high. I'm going to say like an eight on style, it's styling all over the place. Right. Yeah. You know, we talk about like set pieces and things like that. And, you know, where, what point we want to get to in a song that then, you know, makes this song unique and makes this song interesting and, mm -hmm. you know, breaking bounds and all that good stuff. Never been that we done talk before. About. And this has a good aspect to it where, the set piece is kind of that moment where they're running away. And so all that buildup that we do with the with the two people 
is all climaxing at the moment where it's like, okay, so what is the point of showing this weird metaphor, this weird parable about, you know, getting dressed in the morning and going to work? <laughs> and it's like, okay, it finally climaxes at this is why this is why we care about that. Yeah. And I think this does that really well in a stylistic way. Um, also, the message being more metaphorical, I feel like gives some more points in it. Some of the comedy and stuff always gets points in my book. So <laughs> style. Awkward. <laughs> give it a two i'm just kidding uh, st- <laughs> now style i'm gonna give like thinking like an eight as well which is weird because that means i'm giving eights across the board on this one which is appropriate yeah <laughs> style i mean i think i'll stick right with you guys i it's, feel it's, like a copycat i almost feel like i need to say something different but no but no that all yeah and i mean is. it's always fun too i mean just knowing the team we had uh parts were definitely Given and chosen very much on well personality. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it would be fun to see another group do that, just to see kind of what other unique yeah, mm-hmm. characteristics they would bring to the characters. I was going to say, I feel like this is what we need to bring back to our team, because I feel like it's it's a worthwhile adventure. <laughs> yeah. No, and, it's, and we need more openers, so that's yeah. great. <laughs> it's true, true. And it is funny when... Like Rosalie said, like these matched the personalities of people because what we did is we we're like you said, we choreographed it in like an hour and a half. <laughs> and in doing so, like a lot of our own personal fingerprints, our own personal styles kind of like meshed into the character seamlessly because we were the ones who did it. <laughs> like we were the ones who choreographed it. <laughs> of course, Chad and Rosalie were kind of like giving us the instruction on on how to move things. But a lot of the detail work came down to what we decided we wanted to do in that moment, which, of course, for Aaron was just a lot of really detailed (laughs) noting and stuff like that. For myself, it was a lot of, you know, fun characterization, energy. And then for John, you know, John is a very like to the book kind of guy. So he was very technical and (laughs) into it. So it was like it, it worked to all of our strengths. And I feel like that is kind of like a loop because it worked to our strengths because we were also working our strengths in. Yes, exactly. Um, no, and that's, but that's the beauty, right, of, of skilled people doing the choreography and making this. Uh, I think people want to do the song because of that mm-hmm. love and care they put into it, yeah. I'm about to say shout out to Chad. Is this Chad's only choreographed song? Only choreographed. One and done. He, he had a, one, what is it, a one-hit wonder right here? <laughs> <laughs> one-hit wonder. <laughs> that's my arm, yeah. All right. Well, uh, links down below for things that we referenced, you know, different other songs. Links down below for Rosalie's sleeping playlist. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't. How, how do we make this unpublic? <laughs> <laughs> don't, I'm not going to put it down there. Don't put it down there. <laughs> no, he's not going to put it down there. I'm going to put it down there. <laughs> oh, what have I got myself <laughs> Oh, man. Anything else you want to say to them? No, I don't. Mash that like, subscribe, can there's the bit. It's, yeah, sorry. <laughs> and then, as always, well, I guess not as always, because we have an extra person here. You want to do the bit with us? Breaking the line? Yeah, you say breaking the line. Yeah, all right. So I'm Samuel. And I'm Charlton. And I'm Rosalie. Breaking, breaking the, the line. line. <laughs> <laughs> Super corny, I know, but you, you got to retain viewers. That's all right. <laughs> it's for the tens of our viewers. Yeah, for, for, for all 11 viewers that we have. Hi, Mom. 